the evidence of things not seen. Let me break it down a little. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It means that you might not have it right now, but you are looking forward to it. In other words, you are not there yet, but you are on a journey to get there. Are you with me? This is why when you look at your sister and your brother, you have to understand that all of us are on a faith journey. Yeah, why well, you might be ahead of me, but be patient with me. We're not get there yet. Are you with me? It is the evidence of things not seen. You might not see the ideal things you are looking for in your church now, but because you are a faith-driven person, you are anticipating that you will get there one day with the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So God is looking for a church that is deep in faith. Deep in faith. And this is very critical because look here, friends. It's not everything you're going to see up front. The Lord wants you to step out in faith. Are you with me? You have to step out in faith. You might not, you, Sister Lena, you might not see the ideal husband. No. Sonia, you might not see the ideal husband. No. Sister V, you, <laughs> and Sister V, <laughs> you, 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 you might not see the ideal husband. No, but don't give up on God. Are you with me? Yes. Do not give up on God because you are a person of faith. Welcome to those who are just coming. Amen. No. So the Lord is looking for a church that is rooted and grounded in faith. The, the Lord is looking for a church that is Growing in faith, the Lord is looking for a church that is fervent in love. No, I was I was sharing with, with, with Sister Lena. I think it was yesterday um, on Sunday when I look in the congregation and just see see all of you. It was a good look. It it sweetie went oh you were beside me oh, oh. but. It doesn't throw me under the bird or under the bus or TV. <laughs> Bill, she doesn't throw me under the bus. Pastor? <laughs> yes. Secretary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So, so what, what God is looking for is one, a church that is grounded in faith. And two, God is looking for a church that is fervent in love. And three, God is looking for a church that is abiding in hope. Are, are you with me? I think that I'm, I think I'm losing you. Yes. All right. So, so what are the three things I said that the Lord is looking for in the faithful church? I bet you don't know. No. No, before you get to love. Uh, growing in faith. Fervent in love. And abiding in hope. What is hope? Hmm? What, 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 is, what is hope? Hope, simply put, is that tomorrow will be better than today. You are trusting in God that because God is a part of the equation, the hiccups, the struggles, the difficulties that you had last week and even today will get better tomorrow because the Lord is a part of the equation. That, that is it. Look here. If you, this is why Paul says, if it was in this life alone, I had hope, 
I would be most miserable. It means that if you hinge your hope alone on this life in this world, you're going to be miserable. You have to understand that you have to ground your hope and your faith in someone bigger than this. And that's Jesus Christ. Yes, give Sister Lena a minute. Uh, we don't we, we don't know his his his, his first name but his last name is Thomas. Fearfully 
and wonderfully made with all of my hiccups and baggages and all, all of what I have, I am still fearfully and wonderfully made. And this, what we, have to, what we have to do, sisters and brothers, rather than praying for people to, to, to conform into the image that you want them to conform into, you have to pray that you learn from these people. Are you with me? Because sometimes because we refuse to learn, that's why we want people to change. So don't just don't just pray that people change, but you learn from them. Yes, sister. Okay. Absolutely. Look here, friends. You know why? Why Jesus choose people who fail? Because that's all He has to choose from. We're all born in sin, shaped in sin. When we're here on Good Friday, I shared with you that Judas was a part of the eleven. He. It is possible that he worked miracles. It is possible that he preached. It is possible that he would have done some fantastic thing. So, but, and, and, you know, I don't even know if he was destined. I think he carried out um, what his heart led him to do. And, and what this is saying to us, my, my sisters and brothers, if the Lord were to stop using you because of your mistakes and faults, then he could not use anybody. Because we all have faults and mistakes. And then you would not have a testimony of God's goodness and grace. It is only a good God who can use a bad person to do good. Yes, Cheryl. Yes. <coughs> you didn't think Judas was born for that purpose. Right. So Jesus was born for the purpose to die. Right. But Judas right. was not born for the purpose to be trained. Absolutely. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So how did yes. he do it? How he did it? Because Jesus says to him, <coughs> and at the end of the night, yes. Yes. At the last so supper. What yeah. thou are about to do? Do it quickly. Right. Yes. So therefore, God knew, yes. Jesus knew that he, Judas, was going to betray him. So therefore, one of you are a devil. So yeah. he, he has to be created for that purpose. Not, not necessarily. Remember that Jesus is omniscient. Yes. So he knows all things. In fact, uh, put it this way. The Lord knows us all. And not because he knows your end means that you were created for that particular end. Is it the point I'm making, Bill? Not because you ended up doing something means that you were created for that. It's just that, yeah, it's just that the Lord knows your end and your beginning. Your hand is in his palm. So he knows everything about you. That was his end, and the Lord knew. That's what he the Lord knew, but it doesn't mean that he was, he, that was what he was born to do. Because, because Peter denied. Yes. Peter, right. Peter denied, and Peter right. repented. Right, I agree, but Judas, it was too much for him to go repent. So he knows what they're yes, preparing no, 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 no. for. Because even God. when he sell him out, you know, God still give him a chance. Exactly. He, 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 he felt so bad about what he did. He think that God wouldn't forgive him. Exactly. So he so was a doctor. You, you know, um, Bill, we are about 12 post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. Yeah. And not one Judas showed up. Right. You feel bad? Feel bad? Yes. It is more than just a feeling. 
you know, so, so, so he was given an opportunity, just as all, all of us are given opportunities after opportunities. The question is, what are you doing with it? Can I go back and ask a question? Yes. Because I understand what you're saying, Reverend. Yes. Is this fear? Yes. God hard his heart. Yes. To him God point to the children of Israel. Yes. Right. Yes. So would you say fear was created for the purpose that he served? I would let me tell you. It cannot be a case where a holy God creates you for a bad purpose. It would eliminate the scripture that says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I think I need to rephrase that. Yes. That means that the devil... What is this? <laughs> the devil... Yes. I will enter my heart. Yes. And deceive man. Yes. That we were all made good. Yes. And perfect until the fall of man. Yes. So from the devil take over. And God controlled them too. Yes. Yes. But That's he never, and he never created him devil. Right. Exactly. Right. But then he think about something. So who told him the devil? Ah. Uh -huh. Re remember. Re 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 remember what transpired. What yes. remember what transpired in heaven. Yes. He wanted to usurp God. Right. You know, I'm, Bill, what you have to understand now, I think we have been saying this for a couple of weeks now, that um, sin is more than just an act. It is a state. So, the fact that you, you have a sinful state, you were born in sin, you were shaped in iniquity, every single one of us are bad naturally naturally we are bad so we cannot put a hierarchy towards badness so not because Judas betrayed Jesus mean that Judas is worse than Peter who denied him it doesn't mean that he's worse than, than Matthew who ran it doesn't mean that he's bad so all of us are on the same level from a sin perspective. And this is why Judas was given countless numbers of opportunity to repent. But he didn't. In as much as he carried out his mission to betray the Master, the Savior, the Redeemer, and Lord. And, um, forgiveness was, was there for him. Oh, yes. Peter, Peter took upon it. But Judas did not. And this is what I'm saying, sisters and brothers. Never you, you, you put a yardstick beside your sin. Because sin is sin. You don't have big sin and little sin. You understand? You don't have public sin and private sin. All sin are sin. So, from, from a human perspective, my mind might look uglier than yours. But I want you to know that from God's perspective, no sin can enter there. Alright? So, listen to what the Lord wants for the church. He wants the church to be motivated by love. We're talking about a faithful church. That church has to be motivated by love. It has to be founded on truth. It has to be strong under pressure. And it has to be unashamed of the name of Jesus. This is what Philadelphia had going for them. They were motivated by love. I, look, I, I believe, I, I believe um, in all fairness. I, I could say that Salisbury is motivated by love. And not because we have issues from time to time doesn't mean that we are not motivated by love. Agree, sir. Are you with me? Right. So so 
To be motivated by love does not mean that you have to be perfect. But you have something in you that drives you. You have a push factor, you have a pull factor. Are you with me? There is something that is driving your journey. Even though you are complaining about them, wicked up here, you're still a cop. Huh? Even and even though, even though, boy, it might not look ideal to you, you're still a eater on the Lord's table with us. Eh? You, you, you still, so you are motivated by love, founded on truth. So your doctrine must be sold. A church that is driven by a faulty doctrine. You, you, you remember the church that had a Jezebel spirit in it? You remember, you remember that church? So their foundation was faulty. Um, this church was strong under pressure. And I often say this Salisbury. From the, from the foundation of the early church, the early church You would have wasted your struggle. You, you cannot struggle. You, you cannot allow yourself to struggle so hard that you don't win. And this is why it starts out by being motivated by love. Love for God and love for humanity. So of the seven churches, only Smyrna and Philadelphia received no word of condemnation and Smyrna was known as the suffering church and here Philadelphia is a faithful church the Lord did not give a word of condemnation towards them and it is not coincidental that both churches face strong opposition because of their bold witness let me say this categorically Sunspray. Anytime you are living a holy, credible life, you're going to come under pride, under pressure. It, are you with me? Yeah. Why do you think a lot of persons compromise? Because they can't manage the pressure. Because to live the holy life and to walk circumspectly, it is going to put you into another category that might show up others. And people are going to have a problem with that. Look here, if you are on the job and everybody are compromised on the job and you stand out, you're going to come under pressure. Are you with me? And even in the church, if you stand up for righteousness, stand up for holiness, you are going to come under pressure. Somebody is going to have problems with you. So, if any at all you are aspiring to be the Philadelphia church, the faithful church, you will have to brace yourself for opposition. Hard times generally made for strong churches, especially when the hard times come because the church refuses to compromise. Now, so you have to be very careful of you trying to pray away hard times and challenges. <laughs> are, you, are you praying that the Lord takes it away? Pray for what? That's just the first stanza of the statement. He was under pressure. Absolutely. And what that is, I'm, I'm happy you raised that, Sister Lena, because what Jesus is actually doing, Jesus is revealing his humanity. 
that yes me under pressure God if it is possible take you away yes. nevertheless Because you know, I, I come here, come here. We have to balance scripture because what Roman says, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Nothing happens to you by chance, especially when you're walking in the will of the Lord. But some friends, some of them. Yes. Because he's God. He knew your little life in a society. Remember, remember so your little life was just three scores and ten. Right. We're talking about an eternal. An eternal. I'm talking about that. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 Because the same God said, if we ask anything in his name, yes. he will grant it. Absolutely. So if I'm under pressure, I'm expecting him to grant me the yes. favor of removing some of the pressures. I remove the pressures. Yes. And, and that is reasonable, Sister Lina, but one of the things we are raising with us is that as you grow in your faith, you, you have to also grow in your prayer. Because you have to reach the place to understand that God will just let this unused source of so. There's a purpose behind it. If you are going through a rough patch now, God can use that as ingredient for his glory and for your blessing. Yes, yes, um, Camille. So I think this is why the Lord said we have to live in the spirit and not the flesh because yes. the more we live in the spirit, the we shield us. Absolutely. You know, and this is why, this is why our perspective, what is it that, that what is it that forms your perspective? You have to, and this is, remember initially we said that this church was deep in the world. So this, you can't go through persecution unless you know God. Because you're going to fight with carnal weapon. You're going to want to get even. You're going to want to win your battle. You're going to want to be the one who is victorious. All of those things. Human beings have a measure of selfishness within us. We want to be on top. We want to win. We want to be victorious. But when you are grounded, when you are rooted in the word, it is going to transform your perspective as to how to look at um, stuff. Yes, yes, Sister Lina. I know certain things as wise you say, context. Yes. I was listening to Sister Camilla a while ago, yes. speaking about living in the spirit. Yes. Can you tell me, sir, because I read a scripture, it said the spirit of God, and we are well with men. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, simply put, to live in the spirit, to walk by the spirit, it means that you must be controlled by the spirit. Allow the spirit to control you. This is why when you talk about the, the fruit of the spirit, the final peg is what? Self-control. So the spirit gives you self-control because the flesh is rebellious. The, the, the flesh always seeks its own. You have to kill flesh. 
And, and when you walk by the Spirit, live by the Spirit, um, you have to understand that you are allowing your life to be driven. It means then, there are some stuff that you want to do. Some things that you want to see. But when you think of whose you are, and who you are, you have to yield to the control of the Holy Spirit. The same thing happened to Jesus while he was human. He wanted to abandon the cross, but he was purpose driven. He had a mission. And the question is, what is your mission? Now the church in Philadelphia was the youngest and the smallest of the seven churches in chapter 2 and 3. Though the faithful congregation was small in size, our Lord had opened a huge door for them. I want somebody to just read verses 7 and 8. And not because you are small doesn't mean that the Lord do, do not offer to you opportunities to do great work. Verses 7 and 8. Somebody read. Mean that you are invaluable. 
mean that you don't have something to offer. Are, are you with me? I remember when I was growing up and I didn't know that the Lord was preparing me for ministry. I was, I was one of those who was a sweet church. You, you understand? You, I, some of you don't know what it means to, to clean church. But I grew up in the era where I had to clean church. Sweet church and then kind of church floor on a ceramic type. Eh? You, so first it was dirt. Then, then the Lord blessed us so that we could cast it. So we move from dirt to dust. Cement dust. And you had to sweep that. And then you move from cement dust to red oak. So you, you, you had to red oak the church. And you, you do it with such pride and delight. It wasn't a duty. It was a delight. And I want for you to understand, my sisters and brothers, that whatever you are called to do in the church, do it to the best of your ability because you are doing it to God. Now, this was the kind of Christians that were in Philadelphia. They were committed to the task because they were the kind of church that they were driven by love. They, they were God-centered and they were people-oriented. God-centered and people-oriented. They aim to please God. And if they are going to please you, they are ensuring that God is pleased first. Are you with me? We cannot just be people pleasers, men pleasers, women pleasers. We must aim to be God pleasers. No, we are saying that here was a church that was small in stature, but guess what? They had influence, and their influence was given to them by the opportunity that God created for them. No, the question you have to ask yourself as individual, what kind of opportunity the Lord is creating for me when I am at home? What kind of opportunity the Lord is creating for me when I am at work? When I am on the street? When I am at church? An opportunity to make his name great. And the greatest opportunity that the Lord has given you is for you to live a holy life. Live. You, you know, there, there, there's a little song that says, boy, if you can't testify, live. If you can't sing, live. If you can't preach, live. If you can't testify, live. Live. Absolutely. So, your testimony is not just what you talk about. Your testimony is who you become. Are you with me, friends? So, so every single Christian, you are given an opportunity. This is what the Lord is alluding to with the open door. The open door. Never you say that why because you're not big and strong and you don't, you don't have a crown behind you. You can't do anything. The Lord said, whatever door we open, no man can shut it. So if I present to you an opportunity, you need to use it. Yes, Sister Yes, I'm sorry to get your wife. Oh, Lord. Preaching. Genesis. Six. Yes. But as she mentioned context, I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Yes. And the verse that I read is verse 3. Seven. All right. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, 
that they were weird, that made them beautiful, fear. And they took them yes. wives of all which they chose. Here in verse 3 now. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for what he also is flesh, man of flesh, Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Yes. So we still the word says sometimes yes. as Christians. Yes. Because when, when I drive on the road oh, Lord. and when I reach to the stop light. Yes. And uh, it's confession, sir? No, you got for the soul. <laughs> When I reach the stop light yes. and the green light is on, sir, yes. and you watch the taxis and the robots there, yes. allow that green light to change and you five times green, go back and you can't move away. Yes. What do you do? Okay. Uh, so, I am happy. I am happy. I can respond because remember, notice. Which, which testament did Sister Lina read from? The what? The Old Testament. The what? Genesis. The, 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 the Genesis. The Old Testament. No. Long time ago in Bethlehem. So you, you have to understand why Jesus came. Because that which was presented to us under the Old Covenant was the law, was, it, it was strict, it was a, it was a task master. You could not do it on your own. So this is why Jesus is come, so that when you think you can't make it on your own, you, you draw on him that is in you. So he's in you, he comes to live in you, because in the Old Testament, there was no Jesus living in you. There was no Holy Spirit living in you then. But you are now given a new commandment, a new testament, a new way of living. So that now when 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 the light changed five times, you draw on the Spirit and say, Holy Spirit! Why God? <laughs> yes. 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 You would not get the God. Thank you so much, Sister I must go. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. You, you, you've heard of the terminology, paraclete. Yeah. What paraclete yeah. means? Yeah. Paraclete means the one who comes alongside to help. Yes. Friends, this is why you are never alone. Amen. This is why Jesus is saying, I open a door and no man can shut it. When the Holy Spirit open door, nobody can shut it. When the Holy Spirit lock door, nobody can open it. You have help. Right. Your help comes from the Lord. Amen. I so love that red. Because when we talk about, yeah, it, and it's true, yes. this, this the context yes. is everything. And I'm happy that you read verse 1 and 2 to get the idea of what it is saying. And here when we talk about the Holy Spirit not, not striving with humanity. Right? This is the context. This is here it was that God men, godly I mean he, they, were, they were godly men then. They were like angels. And here they were having kids with earthly beings. And so God, he has patience. Yes. But in this state, his patience ran out on them. 
Because this is when the Lord's Spirit might not be with you. When his patience has run out on you. Even though he's a patient. Ah, he, even though he's all that and more. There, there's a time when enough is enough. Yes. For me, and this is, this is it. He, his patient ran out with the people when, when Noah sat there for a hundred and... 20 years, yes. Yes. building and building and building and he was just building, he was warning and he was warning and the people did not respond, right. they did not repent and so the Lord's patience came to an end when he sent the flood. There is a patience that is, the patience that is going to end with us and that is fire. Right. You, you so we'll have to bear that in mind. Yes. I, I want us never to forget that the wages of sin is death. Within the context of the Old Testament, before Jesus came, and persons love to say that the Old Testament is bloodthirsty, presents a bloodthirsty God where the wages of sin is death. You see a lot of killing. Um, a lot of, so if you break the law, you're dead. Um, even with the high priest, if he were to go into the Holy of Holies and he's not right in drop on death, he had to wear bells and a rope tied to him. Yes, so that if he is unworthy, he's going to drop dead in there and they have to pull him out. No, you have to juxtapose the Old Testament with the New. It, it's not that God watered down sin in the New Testament. It's just that somebody paid for you. Yes, yes. And in the Old Testament too. Yes. 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 And that's it. But when Jesus came, he said, you just stay. Stay with us. Stay. Look, when when um Samson went to battle, every battle he went to, the Bible said the Holy Spirit moved upon him to act. No, you have to understand that you have that Holy Spirit consistently etched in your in the fiber of your being. And this is why this church could become so influential because God through the Holy Spirit was now living in them and creating open doors and opportunities for them. Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. In yes. the case of Elijah and Jezebel. Yes. You remember the great miracle Elijah performed at Mount Carmel? Yes. Absolutely. And Jezebel said something. You know, in the end, he wrote down. 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 Absolutely so. So those days you would, you would have a visitation of the Spirit that stays with you for a while and then go. But now, you sleep with the Spirit, you wake with the Spirit, you bear with the Spirit, you eat with the Spirit, you have the Spirit at your back and call. Now, Sister Annie is standing, and the Bible is open. <laughs> okay, we read from this text, what this wrote that first read. Yes. So the spirit was there before in the Old Testament. The spirit was there. Yeah, we're not we're not refusing that. that. We're, we're not refusing that. that. We're not going against what they, she said, but yes. what she uh, bring forward. But in another passage, we talk about in Galatians 5, yes. Yes. verse 16 to 17, and in 1 Peter 3, verse 19, it's a confirmation of chapter. Yeah, of the same chapter 6 verse 3 we tell you all about this 
Remember, you know, remember, remember. All right, I don't want us to, to, to get what Sister Pansy is saying wrong. Because remember, the Holy Spirit was there from creation. Let us make man. So the Holy Spirit was there from creation. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit did not take up residence in our, in our lives. This is why Jesus said, I must go. Because when I go, I will send the comforter to stay with you. So that boy, you don't have um, a six month visit with the Holy Spirit. You, you, you have residence. The Holy Spirit takes up residence in your life. And when the Holy Spirit is in you, my sisters and brothers, you are a force to reckon with. And I want us to understand that. Here was a church that it was the smallest and the weakest, but yet they pleased God the most. Why? Because they were empowered by God. When you are empowered by God, you can... What was the last thing I said, Sister Lena? You're a person. You know, I have your sense. Yes. I don't cut no picture. Yes. Yeah. 
and the Holy Spirit is here to correct us. Yes. So he will not leave us in spite of what, how we may act sometimes. Yes. And as the scriptures say, we have to walk in the Spirit. Yes. So that the Lord will deliver us from the flesh. Yes. So he's here to correct us. Absolutely. So, so when we act, or when we act, it's going to pull us in time. And so we do have to submit to yes. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, that is why you feel bad. If the Holy Spirit convicts you. Yeah, look here. If there was no Holy Spirit, you'd do what you do and not feel bad about it. When them guys are making up, they're not feel bad about it. Uh, some people, and if, 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 if you don't feel bad about it, it means that the relationship you share with the Holy Spirit, you know the Bible talks about a, a seared conscience. If you continue to ignore yes. the Holy Spirit over and over, yes. the Holy Spirit will just back off. Yes. And you're on your own. And if you get to the place where your conscience dead, if you get to the place where sin no bother you again, remember there was a time when if you have a sin boy, I'll cool sweat and wash you. You're, you're nervous and bothered by it. But if you, if you continue to do that over and over, and you are not bothered by it, what is happening to you, my sisters and brothers, is that you have now developed a different kind of character. So, so you, you are now immune to sin. Sin not bother you again. Because you become one with it. Are you with me? So, so if you are still bothered by acts of sin, it's a clear indication that the Holy Spirit is actively at work in your life. Are you with me? So you must feel, you, it, the Holy Spirit would drive you to feel bad about it. And that badness that you feel about it, it will, it, it will encourage you to do something about it. Uh, are you with me? So don't ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He is in you to correct you, to direct you. He's apparently the one who comes alongside you. We will pick up on this next week. Yes, yes, Tracy, let me take the last comment. It's not even a comment. It's really we have persons online. Yes. Not ignore those who are online. Right, please. Um, up to one point, we had 27 persons online. Sister Marsha Bay, she is on. Anybody know who Marsha is? Yes. Right. Yes. And, and um, Brother Conrad, Mr. Conrad, he says, yes, Soul Spring is motivated by love. Yeah. And, and that's one um, of the attributes that we should have. Yes. Like the Philadelphia Church. Yes. And Sister, of course, when we were talking at, um, when we were talking about Jesus, yes. she was she she brought in the, the picture that if it's his will, then we should go through with whatever it is yes. the Lord is telling us to do. And of course the whole matter of humility came into the picture and she mentioned that. And we were talking about the law, about the Old Testament and the New Testament. People thinking that the Old Testament is perhaps should be put away with and all of that. But um, she's saying he, he gave, that is God gave Moses the law, but he gave us Jesus Christ yes. through grace. And so we thank them for their coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for picking up on that, Tracy. I mean, we have some faithful viewers online and they are very much a part of us they I mean once the thing comes up they are there and we just want to salute you my sisters and brothers viewing online and Facebook yeah so Facebook Facebook Good to have you um, on Facebook. God bless you, my, my sisters and brothers, and we will pick up on this 
next week when we do return. God bless you. Will you stand? Will you stand? Let us say thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all that you do.